this particular way, the way this cell is set up, it is wrong, the cell will not work. It also means that cobalt cannot react with Fe2 plus to form Cu2 plus plus Fe. This reaction is impossible, it is not spontaneous, it cannot happen. So, if at all this reaction has to take place, if at all the cell has to work, you have to set it up in such a way that your iron acts as the oxidation half and cobalt acts as the reduction half. But is there a difference between these two cells or is it just that instead of writing it this, you have written it in the other way? There is a big difference. The difference is here the cobalt metal is put in a solution of CO2 plus ions, whereas it is iron is acting as the oxidation state, iron is put in the solution of CO2 plus ions. So, the EM of now if you calculate for this particular cell, so it will be something like this E of the cell would be, I am sorry, E0 of the cell, assuming that this is still in standard state, E0 of right minus E0 of left, E0 of right. Now, it is cobalt. So, cobalt is getting reduced. Therefore, the value we substitute, it is 0 0.28 minus 0 0.28 minus minus 0 0.44, which comes out to be plus 0 0.16 volt, which means this cell is operational, this cell is spontaneous, this cell will work, this cell is non -possi not possible, it is non spontaneous this equation also is non spontaneous so there is this is a, another application of the electrochemical electro the concepts of electrochemistry you can find out whether a particular cell is spontaneous or not in case emf of that cell you set up is coming to be negative that particular reaction is impossible now let us go ahead uh, with solving this particular question we have a cell set up like this under non standard conditions the concentration of Fe2 plus given to you is 0 0.25, concentration of cobalt 2 plus given to you is 0 0.5, the E0 values are already known, let us write it again, E0 of Fe2 plus Fe is 0 0.44 volts minus E0 of CO2 plus CO is minus 0 0.28. Using Newton's equation, you can try to find out EMF of the cell. So, E of cell is equal to E0 of the cell, which we have already calculated, minus 0 0.0591 divided by, number of electrons in this case is same, it is 2 electrons. Substitute in the number of electrons, 2, here you get concentration of the product or the reduction half on the numerator which is CO2 plus and in the denominator we have Fe2 plus. So, this is 0 0.16 minus 0 0.0591 by 2 log of concentration of CO2 plus is 0 0.5, concentration of Fe2 plus is 0 0.25 this comes out to be 2. So, it is 0 0.16 minus 0 0.0591 by 2 log of 2. You can calculate to find out EMF of the cell, which will come out to be positive, which means we can set up a cell like this and you will have a voltage from the cell also. So, with this we have completed the discussion of electrochemical cell in standard as well as non-standard conditions. But there is a connection between the EMF, I am sorry, the Nernst equation and the equilibrium constant of a reaction. Let us discuss how equilibrium constant is related to the Nernst equation. Let us take the same cell which we had discussed already, this Daniel cell, sudden sudden 2 plus Cu 2 plus Cu. Let us assume that this particular cell is 
the circuit is closed. In that case, this reaction Zn plus Cu2 plus giving you Zn2 plus plus Cu. Ultimately, the reaction will come to an equilibrium. In case the reaction comes to equilibrium, will there be any EMF for the cell or not? Suppose the reaction comes to an equilibrium, you set up a cell, reaction comes to an equilibrium. Will there be an EMF or not? The EMF will not be there because the electron transfer becomes zero. So, EMF of the cell would be zero. So, can we write E of cell now is E zero of the cell minus 0 0.0591 divided by 2 log of Zn2 plus on the numerator, Cu2 plus on the denominator, Zn2 plus being the oxidation half, Cu2 plus being the reduction half. But for this particular reaction, equilibrium constant K is equal to concentration of Zn2 plus divided by concentration of Cu2 plus. In that case, we can substitute K C instead of this. So, this will become E 0 of the cell minus 0 0.0591 divided by 2 log of K C. So, the concepts of electrochemistry can be used to find out equilibrium constant of a reaction also. Otherwise, the, con the, the measurement of equilibrium constant is otherwise a little difficult using the concepts of equilibrium constant, uh, concepts of electrochemistry, you can easily find out equilibrium constant of a reaction. So, with this, the discussion of Nernst equation, working of electrochemical cell is over. Now, we move on to the next important aspect of electrochemistry, which is conductivity. We start our discussion with uh, the normal bulb which all of you must have seen and if you have taken a look of the filament, the filament normally is coiled and further coiled and it is made so thin many times as a child I used to wonder why this filament is made so thin. The reason for these two things which are done, one is that the filament is made so long by coiling once and coiling once again. One more thing they have done is the thickness of the filament is made so small. The reason is it works on the principle of resistance and resistance is directly proportional to length of the filament and inversely proportional to area of cross-section of the filament. More the length, more the resistance, more the heat generated less the area of cross section, more thin the wire, more the resistance, more the resistance, more light is produced. Now, the question is, is this applicable to a solution also? Because as chemistry people, we are not more interested in solutions, not in the solid conductors. The solutions also you will find that the resistance is directly proportional to length of the solution and inversely proportional to area of the solution. So, can we write R is equal to a constant K into L by A? R is called a resistance. This constant of proportionality is called conductance. So, resistance is equal to conductance into L by A. What if I take a inverse of it? Instead of taking resistance, if I say 1 by resistance, this would be 1 by conductance into 1 by L by A. So, you can see the resistance since it is directly proportional to length inversely proportional to area of cross section. The filament is made very thin, so that resistance increases. It is the cross section is made very, very small, so that resistance further increases. Therefore, R is 
R can be written as equal to a constant into L by A. Let us say this is resistance, this is resistivity into L by A. Where resistivity is the constant of proportionality, you can define resistivity as resistance of a conductor whose length is 1 centimeter and area of cross section is 1 centimeter. Resistance becomes resistivity when L by A becomes 1. Now, what if I take a inverse of this? If I write 1 by resistance, this will become 1 by resistivity into 1 by L by A. 1 by resistance can be called conductance. One by resistivity can be called conductivity into one by L by A. Resistance represents the tendency of a wire to stop the flow of electrons. Obviously, the reverse of it conductance represents the tendency of a wire to make the flow of electrons more easy. Similarly, resistivity is a proportionality, constant of proportionality. Conductivity is constant of proportionality in this particular expression. Now, let us explain it by using a solution. Suppose you need to find out resistance of a solution. What do we do? Suppose you need to find out resistance of a wire, you use a Wheatstone bridge. But when it comes to a solution, measurement of resistance poses few problems. First problem is, you cannot use DC because in case you use a DC current, there will be a chemical change. Another issue is, how do you connect a solution to a Wheatstone bridge? Both these issues can be resolved by making two adjustments. One is that use AC current. Second is use a particular kind of cell called conductivity cell. Conductivity cell is basically a container having two electrodes which are fixed with the container. This length is known to us and the area cross section also is known to us which means L by A is known to us. So, using these connectors, the conductivity cell can be connected to a Wheatstone bridge and the conductivity can be calculated. The next discussion is How do we compare two solutions using this conductivity? If you, if you want to know which solution is more conducting in nature. When you say conductivity, what you actually mean is conductance of a solution. Suppose I have a solution in a tumbler. I consider the solution having a length of 1 centimeter and area cross section as 1 square centimeter. So now let us see how we can compare two solutions to see which is more conducting in nature. We have seen that conductance is equal to conductivity into 1 by L by A. As I explained, L represents the distance between the two electrodes. A is area of cross section. Now, in the conductivity cell, the length between the two electrodes is fixed. Because these two electrodes are fixed with the cell. So, this length is fixed, area cross section is also fixed. So, this value is fixed for a particular conductivity cell and you call it cell constant. So, we can write conductance is equal to conductivity divided by cell constant. So, conductance is equal to conductivity divided by cell constant. By using the symbols, conductance is given the symbol G, conductivity is given the symbol kappa which is written like this and cell constant is given the symbol G star. So, it becomes G star is equal to 
g into g star is equal to kappa. We have been discussing about comparing the two solutions to see which is more conducting in nature. For the purpose of comparing the two solutions for conductance, we need to introduce the concentration term. So what we do is a new concept is introduced called molar conductance. Let's consider a solution whose volume is 1 liter. Let's say there is 1 mole of substance dissolved in it, which means this particular solution whose volume is 1 liter has got a 1 mole of the substance. If you find out conductance of this particular solution, you call it molar conductance. So, this is the term we use to compare the conductance of different solutions. Now, let us see the relationship between conductivity and the conduct molar conductance. This is conductance of a solution whose length is 1 centimeter, area of cross section is 1 square centimeter. Let us say there is a uh, solution whose volume is 1 cc, whose length is 1 centimeter and area of cross section is 1 square centimeter. The total volume of the solution is 1 liter. In that case, how many such parts will be there in the entire solution? this being 1 liter. Since this is 1 cc, obviously there will be 1000 such parts in the entire solution. You know the conductance of this entire solution is called molar conductance. So, can we write the conductance of this entire solution which is called molar conductance? Because this solution contains 1 mole of substance as the conductance of this much of solution which is actually conductivity into there will be 1000 such equal parts in the entire volume. So, this into 1000 in this particular case. So, if you generalize it, can we write molar conductance is conductivity into volume 